Ready, set, go. Live. <laughs> we are sewing for eight girls over here. And really, we're throwing a ninth in the bunch, too. But she's got to make her way from Australia. So it's not certain whether or not she's going to be here for our beach photos. But, um, but we might make them put all put the dresses on when they come in October. And so we want to we wanna make sure we get her in there. So we're getting a wall of maxi length. Um, actually, for the older girls, it's going to be more like T-length dresses, beach cover-ups. Um, there's kind of like this um, swinging line between beach cover-up to fancy like evening wear that we're, we're crossing here. <laughs> it's because Kristen, Kristen pulls stuff for me, and she said, I know you're going to do what you feel like doing anyway, but... And, I said, well, what do you like the best? So I did that first, and then we we're like, my one of my granddaughters said, I like teal. I like teal. And so this is what I made for her last night. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> you see any teal in that? For what Sally sews, you wouldn't know she walks around here barefoot all day. <laughs> it's like, oh, I love this, you know, organdy flounce. And I look at its silk lining. Silk lining. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I shop at the thrift stores and don't wear shoes. So, But her granddaughters are really dressed beautifully, y'all. And, and they're going to be pretty hard to please when they um, get to be adults. They're all going to want to wear. Oh, my goodness. Not Silk Nike. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. So, so. Um, we have been sewing on the Vintage Vogue 6. I used to know the number. 771, I think. 67, 6711. Anyways, um, it's a beach cover up. It has this little uh, rollover collar. It's really, really cute. And it's actually uh, pleasing to our teens. We bought this from Lady Marlowe on Etsy. And y'all mm -hmm. can find the pattern there. Um, and, and actually, there's another person who prints it too. But we want to shout out to Lady Marlowe because that's where we actually our butt ours. I really love this pattern. I, <laughs> I really want to make it for every single kid. When I sit down to make it, it's just fun. It's fun to make. and um, It's a fast sew, but the results are really pleasing. I know. Yeah. And so even for a nine-year-old, this is for a nine-year-old right here. And she looked beautiful in it. And so the, the raglan sleeve, the raglan armholes come all the way to the neck. And then it has that bias, soft folded over collar. So pretty. As you know, the raglan is the same as like a bishop style dress. So it has that cut that goes diagonally from your armpit up to your neck. Yeah, that's right. But it's very, like, I, I like it on adults. I feel like it's a very flattering, mm -hmm. um, maybe even slimming style. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really fun. And then we have a surprise pattern coming. <laughs> and um, so we're working up different examples for that as well. Yeah, and, and so we have permission from one of our long, long time friends, Sally Goodwin, to uh, rework and reprint one of her patterns, actually some of her patterns. And so we've been working on that and um, we're trying to put it into the works for some of these dresses too. So we now we have the mind of Regina uh, Karish from Come that's, Sew that's With Me. Right. She's she's putting her brain to it as well, so it's yeah. going to be fun. She, she was here just a minute ago and we sent her... We sent her with it and see what she comes up with, and and uh, she'll be with us uh, August the second, which is a Tuesday, and so we'll be able to see what she's made. Probably she'll make fifteen of them. Who knows? You know, she's that way. Today we have um, a a detailed conversation about plaid fabric. So in front of me, these are ginghams. These are not plaids. Um, but we are going to talk about repeats, uneven plaids. Um, a little outfit out of a plaid. Directional. I mean, there's all mm -hmm. kinds of different ways. We're going to talk about lining up your um, seams so that your plaids are, are matching. Um, yeah, so there's lots of conversation. But first, I want to start with these half-inch ginghams that we have received from Fabric Finders. So we actually have their full line of half-inch ginghams. They're 60 inches wide. They're a Pima cotton, which means it has a longer thread, so it has a smoother finish. Um 60 inches, 100% cotton. Have mm -hmm, I gone through the whole mm -hmm. thing? And there, there are I mean, more colors than Kristen could grab in one in one arm load. But there's a beautiful. Can't believe I'm so excited about this dark green. There's a beautiful dark green and white, and to me, it looks like Christmas, mm -hmm. and it's just so pretty. I could see it, and so because of that, um, we we got in some Christmas smocking plates, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna pull those. I'm gonna pull. I mean, these these are just plates that we've actually had in stock. I'm going to just show you a little glimpse. But um, 
I pulled those out because when I saw that green and white gingham, I mean, it can be summer, but to me, it looked like a Christmas dress. It was really pretty. It's a dark green, like a forest green or something. We like to carry all of um, the the ginghams from Fabric Finders. So starting at micro, which is one thirty second of an inch repeat for colored to white square, mm -hmm. all the way up to a one inch square they carry now. And so, um, yes, graduating sizes. And this half inch is... Like, have you ever just been too excited about something <laughs> that we really are loving the way it looks? Like, yeah. how dumb is that? Because it's a check, but it's pleasing in some way. That, it is. Yeah. It's, it's like... It's an exciting new addition. It was such a jump between the 3 8 inch and the 1 inch. And then when this came out, we're like, ah, that's a perfect blend. And if you want to do a tiered skirt or a tiered dress, then you have all the, the, all the different sizes, sizes yeah. and, mm -hmm. and they're really going to be nice. Mm -hmm. So so these are, these are a few new colorways that actually have just been added today. So we have um, lilac, we have orange, seafoam. This is royal. It's a, it's a light. Does it say light royal? Because there are two shades of royal now. I pulled the lighter one. Yeah, yeah, the lighter one is the newest one, and there's a darker royal and a lighter royal. But There's a bright royal and a royal. A, okay, bright royal and a royal. This is kind of, it has a little periwinkle cast to mm -hmm. me. I love this color. This, this is really, really pretty. Um, something that we've started doing online, um, we believe it will make your shopping experience easier, is we have combined products. So now, instead of having to look on different pages for your half-inch colors, we are going to have a drop-down that includes all of the half-inch colorways from um, this this in particular one would be from Fabric Finders. So um, you can find all these new colors online. This is the yellow check. Um, they're really pretty. Yeah. Pretty new addition. You know, I'll bet you people that do the smocking where you pick up the corner of, of a, a gingham or something that you could use that to do that. That repeated pattern. Yeah, that yeah. pattern mm -hmm. like um, Nona like, Pontiff had in the... Is it counter change? Well, called? counter change is one, but that's not what Nona called it. Um, oh, the Nona, lozenges yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look like lozenges, right? Yeah. But you know what? In this, this is the autumn classic sewing magazine, and we we keep looking and looking at this. But look at this leather bag. This is that same that same stitch. That, okay, we're gonna go to overhead on this, and. So stitching on leather, yes you can. This leather purse will have all your friends asking where you got your designer bag. And the back side shows how they did it. Look at that. Wow. So you put your dots on there and you pick them up with your needle and you end up with this gorgeous... So Sally knows just from looking at it, you can do this with gingham. Yeah, I feel like you can. <laughs> I feel like it's possible, but I don't know. I can see what you're saying, but, but I'm not sure. I'm, I know, but wouldn't that be neat? Guess what? We have some... Jan Young would know. She's yeah, the Jan creator Young. of this purse. Okay, that is that is beautiful. So, But we should show no Nona's. Um, we, we showed the... the uh, silk dress that Nona did. Y'all, we're having oh, so we much are. fun flipping through this, this magazine. <laughs> That's um, right. Here is Nona's um, lozenge. Lo lozenge smocking. Now, I never heard lozenge. that term. Maybe. What's fancier? Oh, is it L-O? Yeah, I don't know. Lozenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. So like it's gorgeous. This is made out of silk, a silk dupioni, and it has a gorgeous finish. Um, and I love this color for fall. It's beautiful. This is a bronze or something like that. So Nona Pontiff, and she's our South Carolina girl. This is really, really beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Mostly, I mean, some of my old patterns, my old craft patterns from, I don't know, the 40s or whatever, they have pillows, pillow fronts. Have you seen it? Regina's here. Say hello, Regina. Hey. <laughs> Everybody say hey to Regina. Hey, Regina. <laughs> All right. Anyway, they're so pretty. And so they're detailed instructions in Classic Sewing Magazine the new brand new issue autumn that tells you exactly how to create that look and so you could do it i mean abby wilkinson's been making really beautiful pillows for her new house she could do it for her <laughs> in pink and white for her daughter's bedroom <laughs> all right abby let's see yeah right so um 
we are marking down a Bonnie Blue Designs pattern. This is the Cassie. It's pattern number 140. Um, it contains from six months up to six years um, in pattern sizes. And it is this little, they are calling, she calls it a, what does she call it? A play suit. So it's super cute. Um, it has a ruffled uh, leg option and then shoulder ties. And the, the shoulder ties kind of bring together the front, so it mm -hmm. almost looks gathered. Um, it's originally $14, and we are marking this down to $9 while supplies last. So, um, yeah, this and is And people have been busy ordering it today, so... It's very limited supply, yeah, so yeah. when it's gone, it's gone. But I've been seeing a lot of jumpsuits this year. And, well, um, we had that awesome play suit uh, sewing kit that was from Piquet with the, the bow Piquet. It was like a, a gingham piquet with a bow piquet from um, Bonnie Blue Designs earlier this spring. It was really pretty. Oh, oh we, we don't have it now, right? Yeah, I think it's in stock. Yeah. It? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's it's cute. I love play suits. But, but we're marking this one down, and I you know. can find it for $9 now while supplies last. Andrea Birkin says she loves the ginghams, and Mary Dickens says I love the plaid by Sally. She's eyeing it. Ah, good. <laughs> this plaid is awesome. Good. This is a plaid velvet. We just show this because we've actually marked this down today. We're going to talk about when we talk about plaids, but this is a beautiful cotton velvet. So you can wash it like you would any other cotton. And um, Emma can tell us what the original price is. What twenty two ninety eight or something like that. Twenty two forty nine. Twenty two forty nine, and we have it marked down to twelve. Twelve dollars until Friday. Until Friday, mm -hmm. yep. And I'm going to show you this beautiful, um, this is from um, Page One Designs. It's a boy's bubble. And she made a Creations by Mishy, or Mishé, however you want to say it. It's number 126, and it's called the Dedication Bubble. So a lot of people like, they're looking for a boy's bubble pattern. And you can find her online. She has PDF patterns, maybe on Creations. Etsy, I think she Etsy. has Creations by Mishy, uh, uh, website as well. Is it a website? Mm -hmm. and, okay. But, but she's got classic these, these styles and lots of different boy options mm -hmm. to choose from. Let's draw it on the overhead yeah. okay. to show it. All right. So she used, it's called the Dedication Bubble mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's super cute in this velvet. And don't you know they loved it? Yeah, that's because really it feels, sweet. It feels really good. So moving into our plaid conversation, um, I see that you have this one marked. What, what, where are you starting on this plaid? Are you giving us a definition? How are, how are we going through all this? Are we starting with unevens? I hate to jump in there. Well, I mean, I, I don't know because I don't, I don't really have a starting and an ending point. I just know that the things that I talk about are how to match plaids and that kind of thing. And so when you, when you talk about plaids. Well, what about a gingham versus a plaid? Well, a gingham is more of a, a two color. just a two color mm -hmm. and like just an even a repeating you know, design repeating, one repeating to the design. other mm -hmm. and a plaid a, and a plaid can be printed or woven actually that looks this printed a, it does look printed mm -hmm. but look it's torn and it tears on the um on the straight, on the straight no, and no, green. It doesn't. oh look, it goes off a little here. bit yeah. doesn't it so this is printed okay this is printed mm -hmm. wow so um, a plaid incorporates more colors than just two, and um, but in the same as gingham, you're creating some sort of square uh, um, or rectangular design with the with the plaid. But it can be two colors because there is something called a Glen plaid, and a Glen plaid yeah. is is you know, mm -hmm. just two colors, and it's just the the. The design of the plaid makes it called a Glen plaid. It's usually kind it's of like really darker tiny. and lighter. Yeah, it's uh -huh. tiny. But I, I picked, I wanted to show this because um, they, we have what they, we call even and uneven plaids. And so because this is a velvet, you can only cut your pattern out in one direction. Let's see if we can, if we can see the because difference. Because of the nap. Because it has a nap. Mm -hmm. And if you cut, but with other, with other fabrics, if you have an even plaid, you can flip your pattern piece around. I'm trying to see if it's, does it show two colors? So, so the nap with a velvet is not because it's a plaid. It's because velvets have nap. So, but what you're talking about is this is directional because of because the nap. Because it has a nap, mm -hmm. but it changes colors. A velvet will change colors, if, and a corduroy does the same thing. If you have this knit on this side, when, when I run my hand on here, this is the smooth side. If I go like that, that feels rough. 
And so that's one way you can tell that you're cutting everything in the, in this, with the direction of the nap. This, this has a pile on it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a depth from where the backing of the fabric is to the actual top or surface mm -hmm. of the fabric. Mm -hmm. And so when that shifts in a different direction, it actually changes the color of what you're seeing. I mean, and sometimes very, very obvious. It's like if you've yeah. sat on a couch and you stand up and there's the imprint of your bottom, that's because <laughs> it has a, a nap and you've shifted the, na the nap. Well, <laughs> Have, can you relate to yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. It's the same thing. And, and so if you, if, especially if you're wearing a, um, so actually like wipe a, your bottom, <laughs> if you're wearing velvet, you need to put it back in the same uh, direction. Get up and do <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> especially if you're wearing, if you're wearing a velvet that's made out of rayon, because rayon can really Stick. look shiny mm -hmm. and it, it uh -huh. crushes that pile. <laughs> and so, yeah, you got like, woo, I see yeah. where you've been sitting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to pretend this doesn't have a nap. And so let's say... For educational purposes. Just for educational purposes. And because it, when, you, when you cut out a pattern, you're going to save fabric if you can put one, um, let's say the, the bodice front in one direction and the bodice back in the other direction. Sometimes you can fit more pattern pieces in there. And so... That, that you can only do that with a plaid if it's if it's an even plaid. So what is an even plaid? Well, I'll show you. An even plaid. So uh, first of all, I was going to find the repeat here. So where is my ruler? So when we talk about plaids, we talk about a repeat, and that repeat means it's when the design starts again. That's right. So every plaid has a repeat, whether it's even or uneven. There's there's a repeat to it. That's right. So Sally's going to show y'all how to measure the repeat. So if you're ever reading a fabric description online and it says a half inch repeat, you know that's a really tiny design. That's right. But this is can be worn for babies. I mean, you've seen the dedication bubble out of yeah, it, but it has a funny. very large repeat. And so. sometimes, depending on the repeat, you might have to buy extra fabric mm -hmm. in order to match up your repeat. But so here we go. Okay. Let's... So I'm going to say, this is going to be a lot easier. I don't know why I marked the top of this line. <laughs> when, when we actually have a big old X right yeah, here, right. <laughs> that the X, the X would be your repeat. So I would measure, get me in the middle there. There we go. I would measure from the center of this X to the center of the next X. And that would be that repeat is like eight and uh, eight and five eighths inches. It's like eight and five eighths inches. So right? you can see where this design is starting mm -hmm. again, and that's where that measurement comes from. So it's going to repeat again in another eight and five eighths that's inches. That's right. So let's well, let's see. We can go up to um, to my where I where I started this the, at the top of this light blue line, and. Um, so that would still be a repeat. Um, wherever, wherever you want to start, this middle yellow line right here could be a repeat to this middle yellow line. This is all the same. Still going to be eight and five eighths inches yeah. every single time. No matter where you you pick your your point to measure, it's always going to be that same measurement. So it's easier to work with an even plaid than an uneven plaid because you don't make as many mistakes. But um, to to figure out if it's even. You can go, let me go to the center of this plaid, which is this yellow X. And so on either side of that yellow X, can you get me wherever you need me uh -huh. to be, Kristen? Yeah. On either side of this yellow X, there's a dark blue line. And then there's a wide red line. And then there are two yellow lines. And then there's a navy line. And then there's a light blue line. And so that is an even plaid. So if this wasn't a napped fabric, I could flip this around and I could match this side. I could flip it around and I can match up my plaids. Let me see if that's right. Where am I? Right here. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's not right. Oh boy. <laughs> Watch me. I might have made a big mistake. About it being even? Yeah. Yeah. Because look at here. It's right there. That that's and right. That. Look, that's right. Go back. Yeah, but oh, oh, I'm you looking right. at the I'm uh -huh. looking at the wrong. Okay, here I am. Here I am. Yeah, right, you're right. This. It's, it's even. So this is even, and one's going one way, and then this is going the other way. So um, anyway, so I is that Technic am I wrong? Technically, it technically, would be right here. Yeah, because that you want to repeat that next block. That, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is an even plaid. 
so you could switch your pattern pieces one going one way and one the other and line it up with whatever line is on your on your plaid and they're going to be even it's going to it's going to match but let's look i've got an uneven plaid right here just for for you to be able to see the difference so this is an uneven plaid let's let's find the repeat first so where would the repeat be from the top of this red line to the top of that? You red and I line? never select the same line to measure. <laughs> where would Every you time measure? it totally throws my brain because I'm like, oh, I wasn't even what looking at that do? line. What would you do? The green to the green? That's exactly what okay. I saw. Well, I was let's go green. to the green to the but green. But you can measure anywhere because again, yeah. that repeat is going to be the same once you determine that distance. It's the same everywhere. So here's a repeat, and it's three inches. So the the repeat on this plaid is three inches. So let's see here we've got the top of this is a um it has a lot of uh ivory but where is the center like the center is maybe right in here and so this doesn't have red on each side of the center it doesn't have blue on each side so you could not switch this around and make this make this coordinate Therefore, it is an uneven plaid. So this plaid. is an uneven plaid. I should have ripped a piece so I could do it because now I'm like, spatial relations is like, which you? <laughs> you never know she can do this behind us, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's an uneven plaid and that one has a three inch repeat. And so with this one, you have to cut all of your pattern pieces in the same direction. But even from a eight and three eighths, five eighths, yeah. whatever, to a three inch repeat, both are suitable for adults. Both are yeah. suitable for children. Um, but you, you know, when you know that number, you're going to have a much larger design um, yeah, that, that's, that's with right. the repeat. That's right. So it's very important when shopping for plaids to look at repeats, depending on what you're after. So... I, I, I know how I match my plaids, but I thought, well, I'm going to go on um, YouTube and, and watch several people, which I did. And almost every one of them talked about um, making, like if you have a, a blouse that is on the fold in the front, actually making, going to, and drawing it on tracing paper and making your full pattern piece. So you have your full blouse piece and then opening your, opening your uh, plaid up and cutting it single layer because that's the best way to match and that way you don't have to try and put one <laughs> on top of the other and pin them in place no, that is so hard to do it's i I, <laughs> I do too i and i usually don't don't do don't it. draw it out yeah i don't draw it out no. but but the ones i watch tell you to draw it out if you want when you it watch be, somebody do it especially in like that up uh, YouTube yeah, yeah. version. You're like, I should do that. But you but get when you're right sitting down there, you're, you're like, like, I'm just gonna flop it over. I know. I can. And so what I do is I fold it back to make sure that the lines are right and all of that. But um, and and then I'll pin it. I'll I'll pin it in various places so that I make sure that my my green lines are matched up and that and that type of thing. But I'll show you. I was in, you remember these shorts I made on one of my weekly sews? You know we have vintage pattern love over here. Yeah. So um, when sewing with vintage patterns, there's notches that indicate where you want to, to um, That's right. piece together like your front and back bodice. So those notches would also indicate where you would want to line up your plaids. or, um, or and It would be an indicator for lining so up your plaids. So look, I did a good job on this. What I'm not going to show you, but I will show it's you. The front seam. <laughs> it's the front, the front, the front seam. I should have been more careful about having that line be on the same side and have it come up like a like a chevron. So I'm not happy with that part. And even on the back, it wasn't perfectly. But there will they'll they'll wear the same, so yeah, it'll be alright. Yeah. Charlotte Moody asked, "How about pleating on plaid?" Well, people definitely pleat on plaid. I think you just have to be really careful. I'm gonna, I'm looking at Regina yeah, you because have to, be very careful when you're to keep it, it to rolled on, it. lined up yeah. accurately, right? I think the key, one of the it keys to that, would be that it was a a woven design and, and not a printed design. Oh. Regina said, "Yeah, you you watch it every so often. You make a mark on, on your well. You can even see your plaid to make sure it's going all the way through evenly on your um." 
your needles. Just like with checks, they're yeah, just like checks. Be and really, there's a, right. there's lines to indicate it because there's lines in your design. So if you can follow a line with a with anything else that you're doing that's printed, you're going to be able to follow it with a plaid. I, Sue, Sue's got a question. Yeah. She said, do you measure the repeat when listing the fabric on your website? We try and measure the repeat. We, if, if we don't, you can ask us and we'll do it. Uh, if we don't, we, we su um, supply a ruler on the picture oh, no, so that you true. can see for that's yourself true. what yeah. the design, if it's small yeah. or large. I'm going to show you because I do love vintage patterns and I love the markings on vintage patterns. Um, a lot of people, one of our questions is going to be when we do our giveaway is, do you like paper patterns? And, and so many of you are going to say, no, I hate them. But guess what? I love them. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you this. Um, uh, this is a side seam of a dress. So this is a side front. And back here, this is a side back. And it has a notch, number four. It's a double notch. And then on the side front, it has number four. And so if I had my was putting my pattern laying my patterns out here and I, I had my the other thing that this has and I wish every PDF pattern had it has the straight of the grain on every single pattern piece so if you're watching PDF pattern companies please put that on there I love to have the straight of the grain it's really important with a plaid for sure anyway so when when um, I'm putting my my pattern pieces on my fabric I'm going to make sure my grain and my overhead. Yeah. My fabric is on the straight of the grain and it's pretty easy with this. I can see through it. Sometimes I'll fold the pattern back and line it up with a line in the plaid. And so here the top of my number 4 notches is right above this dark brown line. So then here I'm going to put this on the straight of the grain. I can see it right through my pattern and I can line it up there on a line. And so then I'm going to want to bring this this down here so my number four notch is in exactly the same place as the number four notch that it has to match up with when I'm sewing. And um, So would you then kick it over to have that design repeated? Would you kick it over there to where it's brown? Well, if my name was Cookie Bar, I probably would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that would really line it but up, right? My name is Sally Winkter. I'm not going to worry. If my if my plaids match this way, I'm not going to worry about it. Now, Are you going to like the front of your shorts if you don't do that? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be different. But the nice thing about this, this pattern has, it's on the fold in the front, so you don't have to worry about things matching up this way. Pants. Yeah, you kind of have to worry about so it. So what if your pattern does not have these notches? How can you correct that? That is a really good point. Um, what you can do is that you can actually take your pen and let's say you had a PDF pattern you were working with with no notches. Um, you can mark, like one, one lady showed how she laid her pattern piece on and then she actually marked, well, let's say she put a mark here at the top of the red you know and she might have put red and then she might have put another mark up farther up and so she made her own notches and then she took her matching pattern piece and put them together and and then she transferred her marking like this one, oh, this yeah, would be from one to the other then you would transfer your marking from one to the other so you would then you would you know mark it and then you would know how to how to, you created your own notches for matching plaids. So could you measure like from the hemline like up? Would you would you do it that way? Like if you have your finished hemline length of this. Well, you can definitely do you you can well, the other thing I do, I the shoulders I do, would well, be harder because the shoulders they're, sometimes they're are set harder, differently. But a lot of times I'll actually start it at the same. Do you do that, Regina? You might start the hem at the at, at the bottom of the dress or the bottom of your garment at exactly the same place because that has to meet. And that would line so you up yeah, so for that, the whole yeah. distance. That's going to line mm -hmm. you up. And But the most important thing is making sure you're on the straight of the grain. Otherwise, you're going to be like all over the place. And uh, yeah. That. That George said it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> paper Thanks. patterns are getting a lot of love. Mm -hmm. Oh, you like paper? I love paper patterns. So I really, do I. I know. 
I mean, the, the thing is about PDF patterns, there's so much more available out there for us. But if I can find one in my stash that's close to what I like, I'm probably going to pull a paper pattern. And I don't want to have to tape it, cut it Do out. Do you have a new PDF it. pattern? Did you purchase a new one? Well, actually, yes. Yes. Because she loves PDF <laughs> patterns too. <laughs> So it was only three pages to print. This was easy. <laughs> yes, Michelle printed this for me. So this. So you know we're working up to our, to our beach photo shoot here. So um, every time I see something that might work for the beach, we like to say we can't leave well enough alone here. I know. So we're adding so more. See that hat we made last year? That's uh -huh. vintage little lady Miami, right? The Miami sun hat. So I made all the girls a Miami sun hat. Did the boys? The boys they had a different had, one. Michelle made them a, a bucket hat. Yeah. Um, uh huh. Sandcastle? Sandcastle, Sand Sand bucket, Sand yeah. bucket hat. Sandcastle bucket hat. Who is it? Waves, Waves and Wild. Wild. From Waves and Wild. Sandcastle bucket hat. But this year, <laughs> I saw this cutest hat. <laughs> well, now, this, this doesn't take much taping. This is called the Sunny by Twig and Tail, PDF Pattern Company. Twig and Tail, T A L E. And um, our friend, uh, Carolyn, Te Carolyn Tester. I'm so sorry, Carolyn. I'm embarrassed that I even struggled. Carolyn posted a picture on Regina's um, Come Sew With Me Facebook page. You guys have to join it if you haven't joined. Come Sew With Me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And um, she used a pattern from Twig and Tail, and it's really cute. It looked like a tunic uh, blouse. It did. It was really yeah. Funny. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to go look at that. <laughs> and what did I find? I found a really cute Y'all, we are so pattern. far ahead for our summer sewing. <laughs> This will be nothing if we tack it on. Can you believe it? Yeah. Normally I'm a week ahead and I'm like, what am I going to make? Anyway, this is so darling and this is a free pattern. All you have to do is sign up for their newsletter and they send you this pattern, Sunny, S-U-N-N-Y, from Twig and Tail. You guys have to see it. it it's like um, 11 sizes from preemie to large adult. So... How about Everybody that? Everybody can have one. I know. I'm going to have to make all of them. That's right. But it's really cute. It looks kind of like a tulip. I or... think you should make all your sons one. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think they exceed that large adult size. Yeah. They've got some big, got some big old heads in their family. I'm not sure I can wear a large. <laughs> Me either. That's but anyway, go to Twing and Tail. They've got some cute patterns, and um, they're so awesome to have this a freebie. Anyway, so it's just, cute. just a few more plaids to show y'all. Um, we have an even, an even. Um, this is a tiny, tiny repeating plaid. So which one would you line it up with? I want you to do it. I would go with that white <laughs> line. What would you go with? Not the white. Oh, you're kidding. Uh -huh. What would you go with? I don't even know. Okay, every man. time you do it, I feel this like. This is like a half inch. It's a tiny, tiny check. Yeah. This would be great for court. Actually, um, this looks very similar. Uh, Laura Hilton of Peony Patterns made a black sat uh, sheen sateen dress last year with a, a plaid back bow. It was very, oh, very right. cute. Dude. And it was in that tiny, like yeah. half inch repeat size. Um, this is another, um, this is a pink and blue. This would be really that cute for really back to school. Cute. I love the colors on this. This um, is like a half inch or five eighths, right? Maybe a little, yeah. Half inch. Is half that inch, half inch? Is it? Yeah. Um, so yes, this is another of the repeating plaids, even plaids. And don't you just look at these and think, oh my goodness, wouldn't this be cute? Wouldn't this be cute on the bias? <laughs> I always do. I'm like, oh, how cute is this? That's cute. As a ruffle on the bias. I don't know if it is a, a monogram. A bodice. Yeah. Well, hey, that's one thing that these ladies that are okay. that, that yeah that we're talking about how to sew plaids. That when you're making a blouse that has a yoke or uh, an accessory like a pocket, cut it on the bias, oh, the bias. and then you don't Nobody have to knows. match it up. That's what they said it's so much quicker. One of my favorites. This is a wool fabric. Is it a blend? No. no. This is a this is a for real. This wool. is an Italian import, and it uh, you know it when you feel it. It's it's this really is beautiful. So nice. Now you need to make a kilt out of this. I think it'd be a darling kilt. <laughs> Make then that you, for the boys. Yeah. <laughs> then you're going to need to know how to do your tailor tack so that you can line up all this your pleats. This looks like an uneven. Well, I think it's maybe even because let's say that's in the middle, the white, and then there's black on either side, and then it goes red, and then a darker black, then white, white, yellow, there, yellow, there we go. blue, blue. So does it matter when you switch it this way? Well. Because then it's uneven. 
It's actually even, right? Is it really? So From this here to is here? White. Matches here to here? And it goes over to white, white, yellow, yellow. Blue, it's beautiful. Blue. However it goes down. This is an even plaid. But sometimes it could be uneven this One direction. Way, uh -huh. But even this way, you're right. It's on sale. This, this one's on sale? Mm -hmm. It's regular 89 and it's on sale for 39 Oh, this is... It's I really fabulous. Really oh, that's a good deal. Is this a... Um, what is that? A wonderful gold butterscotch by Prada. Is this a Prada? It is. This yeah. is a Prada it's, wool. It's, mm -hmm. Actually, it's not Italian. That's I mean, German, like, right? I don't know, but it's fabulous. So fabulous. this is this definitely makes me think back to school. Like I love mm -hmm. this look. And um, man, where did I see? There were these little girls in plaid dresses, and they had matching hats, and it looked very similar to this. It was so these cute. colors are pretty. Yeah, this would be cute for brother sister uh, coordinating mm -hmm. outfits also. Very pretty. Love that. It's a little different, which I like. Yeah. Actually, this one is too. This, okay. This one is Speckler Vogel, and um, and they have some beautiful, um, beautiful plaids like at Christmas. I think we I pulled out a this one. Yeah. Oh, I love this so, one. So one one year, Connie Palmer made a um, a dress. I think it was the cover of the Christmas issue, and she copied a dress that that she wore when she was mm -hmm. like five or something, right? And, um, and it was a beautiful plaid from Speckler Vogel, Pima Cotton, wonderful. And so we this started carrying classic. those. I think, I think this, this is the plaid, I think. Mm -hmm. This is plaid number 54. And so we've had piping made. It looks wonderful with dark um, green or black. Is it black it's a or great blue? blender. Um, a corduroy. Looks great with a dark mm -hmm. green corduroy. It's nice. Very pretty. It's nice. Yeah. So, um, so... What else do we have up here? Oh, let's talk about your dress. Do you want to talk about... Yeah, we um, can get some advice. We, we definitely need some advice. <laughs> We've got uh, an idea brewing over here for a an elastic cased, maybe um, a bare shoulder ruffled, how do you call that, sleeve addition? So um, this is one of the, this is the teal colorway we have here for our little girl. Um, it's an, it's an embroidered netting. It actually has It might a, go to Andy. Yeah. I'm thinking it might go to Andy because it's, I, it'd be beautiful on Andy. Her, her Kristen's dark, Andy has dark, mm -hmm. dark hair. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. So what, what, um, what we're envisioning here, show them Sally. You so got that piece. Let me, let me show this. This is the, the fabric that it came from. It's a double border. We, I called it sea urchin so that we can make it beach, beach like. Oceany. Yeah, oceany. So it's double border and like, a, I don't know, 48 inches wide or something like that. I'm not sure. And um, so I was able to cut this top part off and I thought, why can't we do some kind of a, some kind of a flounce or something around here? And the girls were saying, how about... How about make it gather like an off the shoulder thing or it even could come up here. And so this this actually is the dress and it the fabric the pattern I'm using has a little small yoke that goes right here and it has straps. But how pretty would this be? But okay, all you girls that that manipulate things. <laughs> Help me think this through. All you manipula manipulative you, you, women yeah, out there. Yeah, you manipulative women. <laughs> Could, couldn't I gather part of this to the front yoke and then put a casing, continue from the front yoke little thing right here? So, so it's this, this, narrow. It does have a, a short yoke, which yeah. Sally will still put on. and But then it ties for the shoulder straps. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't be, have a sleeve option. Yeah. So um, what you're envisioning is to use the pattern, but then also yeah. incorporate um, somehow over from the front yoke to the back yoke. Yeah. So gather... Maybe put a casing. Could you add elastic to the sides of the yoke and then put it around to the back yoke? Yeah, I probably could. And then just you, gather that on the elastic over for the sleeve? That's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. Put, the, put elastic casing through here from yoke to yoke. The but then gather this to the yoke and actually sew it to the yoke, right? Okay. We're all we're like brainstorming here. So brainstorm with us. If you've sewn a garment like this, um, direct us to it or tell us what you did to make that work. Because guess what? The hem is already done. <laughs> now she can spend all her time on this yoke I and know. sleeve option. And Eileen so, agrees. Elastic in the casing. 
Yeah, and I think it'd be beautiful. And on Andy, with her dark hair, gorgeous. And my granddaughter, who said I want a teal dress, is going to be happier if I find her a teal. But <laughs> I kept trying to put this over a color, and I, I didn't like it. I, I just... I just didn't love it, and it then all cheap. of a sudden, it did look cheap. It, it, it lessened the the beauty of it. It looks much prettier and elegant, then, like uh, much prettier than for evening wear. Because we're yeah. going from beach cover ups <laughs> to evening wear here, so I'm not sure we have anything that's really a truly beach cover up. But then, then I turned around and I was looking around all the whole shop, and I saw this um, Italian <laughs> silk blend. Um, it's really a knit type of fabric, but it doesn't stretch, but it was like perfect. I'm like, okay. All right, like this Prada wool that we have up here. When you when you touch this, it's different. I mean, it, it, it feels fabulous. Yes, and it does not have a lot of stretch at all, but it's it, you can see that it's a knit and it's yeah, lightweight. Color is so cool. Oh man, it's like perfect. So anyway, I have to just figure this out. And I think I can put that yoke, right? I could add some straps that tie right there if she wanted to use them. Are you making a sleeveless dress? Wouldn't it be sleeveless? Mm, really? I mean, that would have the things that come around here. It won't be sleeveless. I mean, I the, mean it, the, it will be a strapless. You're going to do a strapless without well, doing the shoulder ties? Mm -hmm. But it probably needs shoulder ties. Yes. I think you need yeah. shoulder okay. ties. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Margaret Tuck says gather fabric edge strip and attach to the straps. Mm -hmm. Well, I could do that. You can make a that's, little sleeve out of it. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of like what she said. It would do a. Right. It would be a. Right. A sleeve for the, it. Uh, I'll show you a pattern. The creative Mrs. K on Instagram said, "I did a smock dress like that last year. You definitely could do that. I had an elastic casing and tacked it to the arm straps." Oh, okay. Okay, I could. So see that. you're talking strapless because you would have the elastic run through the I top of the. I, I mean, wouldn't have any elastic run okay. through that yoke. Because I'm thinking, if you don't have something that snugs it up against your yeah. body, you'd have right, to right, throw right, right. in that because strap. She can get because then yeah. it's just going to be be falling off of her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, you know, it's going to be pretty, right? right? I think it's going to be. Somebody really, steps really on the back pretty. of her dress. Oh yeah, whoops! Comes down. A photo shoot to remember. <laughs> yeah, for Andy. We, yeah, exactly. We, um, last year when we went, um, Elijah is, he's nine now, but he, he's the most darling little redheaded fella, sweet as can be. And he's pretty particular about how he looks. Anyway, somehow, I think he got in a wave. Then he hit the ground, hit really hard on the, and, and so he, let's see, he busted his lip. And it was real swollen. and It's the biggest busted lip you've ever <laughs> yeah. seen, poor thing. And I was like, <laughs> and I said, he was listen, not happy. we can Photoshop, uh, Photoshop that out. No, in, in the pictures, he said, he sat with his back to the photographer. <laughs> and so... I think more power to him if he don't want to be a part of it. That's right. Good for him. And that's, that's why I say, well, I just want him in there, even if it's his back. Because, I mean, he is the sweetest fella. So, anyway... Are you ready to draw our winner? <laughs> no, I want to show this only because these are so cute and it made me think I want to show it. So then I thought, well, what else can we show of Ellen McCarn's? So we, we reordered some patterns from Ellen McCarn and, um, and they're so pretty that I'm going to show you. This is Della Robia and this was actually designed by somebody from Augusta that's um, B.B. Smith. And we showed that last year because I went to an estate sale that that of her daughters had of her things, and it's a beautiful design. There's ribbon work in it. There's it's a, it's a heavily embroidered, but it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. This is called Victorian Bow and Flowerettes. This is Ellen McCarn. I'll go overhead for this. Okay, you can do it however you need to. And this one has some Christmas in it also, but it has other. This is called Rebecca, and there are lots of options, including. Um, a uh, yoke dress option and bishop options. Beautiful. Little prince and princess. I mean, these are from, now this one's 2013, but some of these are from 1996 and whatever, but they're just real classic. And so in case you haven't seen them, these are all Ellen McCarn. This one's called Happy Birthday. Oh, I love that. Isn't that cute? I don't think I've ever seen I that. Know. That's really cute. Cute. And so we have Little Lambs and Friends. 
This is from 2003. We actually have a smocking kit made with this, I think. Oh, cute. Then this mm -hmm. one is called Count Your Blessings, so you can see. Or maybe it's a right. smocking kit made with this one. <laughs> There's little lambs somewhere. And this is Ecru on white, and it's great for, well, here's, here it shows in other colors, too, but this is called A Christening Day for Carlos, suitable for yoke or bishop, and so a wonderful for a christening. And we do love Ellen McCarran's smocking plates, and also... She has two smocking books. One is called Picture Smocking with Ellen McCarn. And I'm thinking, I mean, they're very, they're under $15. I know they are. They're very, very reasonable. This is priced. English smocking. Yep. So this would be your beginner beginner one. And this is the one that Picture Smocking usually comes next. How much, do you see how much? They're $12.95. $12.95. And it's just full of, it has smocking designs. It has all kinds of things and how to take care of your pleater. And then where would you be without the smock and block? Oh my god. Ellen McCarr. Yes. This is so popular. This is a hugely popular item. What is the price? Do you know the price on this? Mm -hmm. Um it's an easy easy layout um tool for for um the bishop for the, the bishop collars. pattern, yep, mm -hmm. and for collars. Yep. And it has a huge size range option, which is great. And the reason I pulled this little plate and this will segue us right into our drawing. <laughs> the smock and block is nine. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Yeah. So this is called the Shepherd's Flock, and it is by Cross-Eyed Cricket. And um, so we we had the best comments this week. Oh my goodness! So somebody said they loved the blue light blue corduroy that was in our giveaway, and um, they could just picture the Shepherd's Flock smocked on that light blue corduroy. So I wanted to bring out and show you the Shepherd's Flock. This is Cross-Eyed Cricket. So yeah, here's the pretty blue. I'm, I put two vintage patterns. Somebody said I like everything except the vintage patterns. So, <laughs> if you win, so we'll pull them out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but they're ladies' patterns, and you know, 1970s. Some people love them, some people don't. But they had a good pair of pants in there, and they're not like size two. Never know when you're going to a disco party. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> or your kids might want to dress up that's like right. their grandmother. <laughs> We are offering a twice a week giveaway here at Farmhouse. Um, enter to enter on those those video postings to get your name in our bin here. Um, the giveaways are a large. I mean, you can see how big this is. It's large value, large quantity stuff. Oh, I want to show one more thing with your cape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's draw this winner first. Okay. We'll get this out of the way. Okay. So, um, yeah, y'all y'all follow along Mondays and Thursdays. We're posting the videos. Um, yeah. To see who wins. All right, Kristen, draw, draw somebody out of here. I'm take them all up here. All right, we have Catherine Jones, always ready to watch Gavin Gush and hopefully win some of the giveaways. All right, Catherine cool. Jones. Do you lick your thread? That's what we yes. want to know. That's that's what we asked. Do you lick your thread when you sew? Oh my goodness, I laughed and laughed at some of the the comments, and some people said absolutely not, but that was maybe. A half of a percent. Probably 99.5% said yes. You gotta put a little love in it. And then um, I'm gonna show this because actually, um, I'm gonna show this too. What, so, how, how do we get back here? From plaids? Is that what? Yeah, what's from plaids. That's yeah. from plaids. So Sally's made this up in a few different options. I think we had a wool option. It's a vin it's not vintage. Well, it's not that, that old, yeah. but but guess what? I think it was an old pattern and then they came Yeah, that's came why I was like, I don't again. see it as an old pattern. I know. So this is McCall's um it is is it MP six three zero? I feel like I've yeah. never heard them referred to that way. Um and it is a cape pattern. But look at look at this. This is so much fun to make. This is another one of those boop, boop. I know, right? <laughs> this is another one of those easy peasy, really fun. And I made this for Emma and she's outgrown it. And I had the cutest picture of her wearing this and um, she looked wonderful. But look at look at this. I actually match my <laughs> look at here. You matched your plaids I up. I matched my plaids up, people. So I you can see on this it. one it has that um, color to, to yeah, white. Yeah. Um, but it throws in that little bias or yeah, twill look. Yeah. So we, we have this wonderful fabric. Um, I do love it. This this was easy to work with because I didn't li have to line it or anything. But mm -hmm. this pattern is very fun. If you can find it, you're going to love it. I've made it for some of my other granddaughters too. But anyway, <laughs> about licking the thread. 
Now, several people, <laughs> I have to talk about licking the throat. It was kind of a weird question, but um, several people said that they licked their, their needle eye and then huh. the thread just kind of, like somebody said, when she threads her machine, she licks the needle eye and all I could picture was somebody <laughs> doing that. <laughs> trying, trying to get their head so under there and they're like, oh my goodness, I just put my foot down. that machine off. <laughs> no, exactly. uh -huh. <laughs> and then some, somebody said they lick their finger and put it on the back of the needle of their sewing machine needle and then it pulls that thread through. I'm so. Try it. You gotta you have to try it. And somebody said, "Don't be eating chocolate when you lick your thread." And I'm like, "Yeah," or drinking coffee because uh, I've been hand sewing. I'm like, "Oh, that looks that. yeah, lipstick." <laughs> I quit wearing lipstick because I put pins in my mouth, which you're not supposed to, and I have lipstick, and I but I'm like, "Oh man," yeah. <laughs> so I don't wear lipstick anymore. <laughs> I do drink coffee though. But anyway, anyway, if you if you want to get a chuckle or um, whatever. I loved your answers. I loved reading them. Somebody said their great grandmother taught them how to do it. Taught them how to lick the thread. Yes, That's cute. yes. Then somebody said, "No, I just snip it. And if it doesn't work, I snip it again." And you're like, "Okay." But then I was over there sewing, sewing these little bows on, and I'm like, every single time I'm licking my thread, and I think about it now all the time. I feel like I I lick, and then if that doesn't work, I snip it to uh -huh. get a clean cut. Yeah. But but you know, before COVID, did. <laughs> Did we, did we lick our fingers a lot? You know, like, did you lick your fingers to open the grocery bag, and the vegetable bag That's in the store? The and you're like, do. oh, man, I'm looking around all the time for something wet that I can put my hand on. I'm like, anybody look? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called it spit sewing. Yeah, right? That's cute. Oh, my goodness. So spit, we have spit or snip. Yeah. <laughs> We're having fun with these giveaways. Thanks for joining in and uh, tuning in here to our Gavin Gush. Yeah. So we'll see y'all back here on Friday. And Michelle's coming to turn us off on Instagram right. over here. Ah, she's like moving like We're this. We're trying to behave people. ourselves until oh. she gets here.